previously on Ultimate F1 Career. Yeah, little lift on the throttle. We hit the kerb, though. Very lucky to keep it out of the wall. That's going to be a red... Ew. I think that's going to be it, though. Uh, up to the line we go. Oh, wow. A 127.6. Very slow. Let's see how we get on in this Italian Grand Prix. Our worst starting position for quite some time. But we are underway here in Italy. Decent start off the grid. And we know that we've got uh, a pretty slippy car when it comes to getting into the slipstream. A little bit of a no John Nakajima there. Head down the inside of Bordet. That's going to be a drive-through penalty, isn't it? No? Yeah. Damn it. Well, I don't think we were going to score points anyway, thankfully. Yeah, just went a little bit too hot into there. Couldn't slow the car down enough. Oh, we would have finished it. Because Alonso had a penalty. Look how many people had a penalty. Hamilton. Yeah, I, I think we're going to be okay. We're going to finish something like 14th here. Hey, 14th. We'll take that. This has been a good sector. Need to just finish it off now. Yeah, a little bit slow out of the final corner. Head up to the line. It's a 43-2, which is only good enough for 19th. Lights out. Away we go here in Singapore. It's a decent start off the grid. But we're just going to take it nice and cautious into turn one. We head down the inside of uh, PK. Oh, that's got to be Bordet's fault, that, surely. Whoa, God's sake, Piquet. <laughs> well, what a replay of that. And it is 15th place. A disappointing episode in terms of points today. Hello, how's it going? Welcome to the finale of F1 2009 in our F1 Ultimate Career Mode. Next time out, we will be getting involved in F1 2010 and starting the 2010 season. And, uh, well, it's going to be at the end of this episode where you find out which team I will be driving for. We've got a triple header up for you today. Japan, Brazil, and the first ever running of the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully you guys are too. Can we have a big push on likes for this final episode of F1 2009? It would be great if we could hit... 25 likes for this video that would be absolutely amazing get involved down in the comments section as well comments you know help pretty much more than anything really uh, let me know what have been some of your favorite parts of this first season in this we'll have a little mini season review at the end as well but first of all let's get ourselves into japanese qualifying of course uh, we had the japanese grand prix in real life recently in the 2024 season um but uh, yeah obviously at the end of the season uh, back in 2009 and all the way up to 2023 actually but uh, let's give ourselves a, a couple of laps to to drive this let's see how we get on we qualified in 20th position for the last two Grand Prix in Italy and in uh, Singapore which uh, I don't think was necessarily a reflection of our true pace but uh, on some of these high-speed corner tracks, it's very, very difficult handling, isn't it? But uh, a little bit of curves up the up Dunlop and then into Degna 1 and Degna 2. And we're not too far off uh, Sebastian Vettel's time, actually. Pleasantly surprised by that. This is going to be a very, very tricky hairpin in the race with uh, worn tyres. Certainly on lap one, there's going to be quite a bit of carnage down there, you would imagine. 
put in a spoon for the first time. But yeah, this track is uh, playing beautifully. In this game, 1.2 seconds off the pace as we head into 130. Ah, oh, that's annoying. We just took it a little bit too wide and we get our lap time deleted. What would it have been? It would have been a very good time. A 135.3, which would have been enough to get through into Q2. I'm just going to have to take off 2% of what we were doing there. This is our last run at it and can't really afford to make any mistakes here. We should be quicker just via the fact it is our second lap rather than our first lap and there's our teammate just in front there getting right in the way but we pretty much match Sebastian Vettel through that first sector a little bit of Kerr's deployment as we head up towards the hairpin that's okay yeah a little bit of Kerr's on the exit there as we have the run down to Spoon Curve Yep, there we go again, using our up our curves. How are we getting on in this middle sector? Yeah, about eight tenths of a second off. Yeah, just a lift this time rather than trying to take it flat and into the final chicane. It looks pretty good. Right, this should be enough to get through to Q2 then. We head up to the finish line. What's it going to be? It's a 135.3, which is enough for 13th. Okay. You're in P13. 13th. We'll take that. Bode, Kubica, Sutil, PK, and Nagajima all going out in Q1. Okay, one lap shootout then. I'm going to have to massively. Oh dear. Well, that's the end of that then, isn't it? Goodness me. Um, yeah, I don't think restarting our lap will help. No. There we go. So it's 15th uh, for the race, that's uh, a shame, we left ourselves too much to do there, but going out in Q2 along with us, Alonso, Coverline and Heidfeld and Buemi. Okay then, uh, let's see how we get on in the race. Apologies, we missed his little intro there. Vettel, Button, Rosberg, uh, Weber, Barrichello, Raikkonen, Trulli, Hamilton is your top eight. Glock, Massa, and then Alonso and Kovalainen, and Heidfeld, Buemi, and ourselves. And we know the bottom five drivers already. Um, we are starting on hard tyres this time, which we haven't been doing recently. But it's lights out, and away we go here for the Japanese Grand Prix. Having to use Kurs off the line as a little bit of a helper into turn one, and we well head down the inside of the two Toro Rosso cars up to 14th right now. Now Vettel seems to be the one that could take it to Barrichello. And he was just 20 points behind. And well, if he wins this Grand Prix today, and Barrichello was to finish fourth, for instance, that would be a decent amount of points gained. That's what was quite good about the old point system. It seemed to keep things a lot closer than what we have these days. Oh, dear me. That was a hefty one from Heidfeld there but uh, it's a good start for us a very solid start a little bit of curves on Kovalainen it's just so oh and they well there's a couple of drivers into the gravel there including Fernando Alonso and Lewis Hamilton 
So we're up to P10 now. Two drivers off into the gravel there. Not great if you're one of those guys. But very good if you us and on our hard tyres as well. This, is, this could work out very, very nicely for us as we head into lap two then. We've caught up to Felipe Massa here. This could be a chance. Occurs on the exit. Yep, this is good. Yep, we're through. Oh, he's making a contact with us, but we're okay. Out. No got a yellow flag somewhere. And once again, whoa, we got lots of cars here. Damn it. I think that's for our... The incident has been cleared. Yano Trolley's retired. Yano Trolley out. I think that was because we overtook under yellows. It was completely innocent. There goes Yano Trolley into the pit lane. We're going to get our drive through penalty out of the way. Although I think we're coming into the pits anyway this lap, so yeah. So we'll have to go next lap, I think. Pretty decent pit stop for once, 10.6 seconds. Yeah, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to be at our best now, which is a real shame because we, we've done well to fight our way up the field a little bit, but um, yeah, drive through penalty for the yellow flag incident out oh, yeah. Sebastian Vettel's retired. Oh Vettel's out! Well that's probably championship over then, isn't it? Yeah, I mean Weber's somebody else that could do something but he's only just in front of us so I'm not expecting that to bring about many things but uh, you know drive through penalty is not the end of the world it's it's a, a severe penalty don't get me wrong but uh, at least it's not a stop go So here we come then into the final chicane. It's a pity because I think we're driving really, really well here. You're closing on PK. Well, here we are, we're into the pit lane. Driving through and that was uh, an engine failure. I think that was Vettel. This has worked out okay. We're actually still in sixth place despite the drive through penalty wow well this race <laughs> is um, is very interesting we got button right behind yeah and there's uh, Heike Kovalainen just in front of us Oh no. Just sort of lost it into the Degnaz. That's Jensen Button there. A little bit of curse. And we get past him nicely. And Kovalainen's gone wide. Kurz on the exit to try and catch up to him here. What I love about this game is uh, the amount of failures the, the AI get, but also. How many mistakes they make? And there you go, Kovalainen! Right. 
I think we're okay because Trolley was off the track. I think we're okay. Oh, come on! God's sake. Well, there goes Kovalainen off the track again. And here we come for another drive through penalty. Are we going to be lucky this time? No, because there goes 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th now. Goes through. On to the final lap of this race. I feel like we've been very unfortunate there. Yeah, I mean... Clearly we, we had to stop, probably. But, I mean, there might be a lot of other people getting penalties as well. <laughs> for, for doing the same thing. But, yeah, it's a, it's a shame. I mean, it's been quite the... Quite the eventful race, hasn't it? But it occurs on the exit there. Oh dear. No, we are through. That's fine. And we don't know how many cars are going to go wide into Spoon here. They've been going wide all day. I think I'm going to get another drive through penalty, aren't I? I mean, yeah, I, 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 ha yeah, I don't know what I was meant to do there. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> 50 seconds <laughs> oh dear right Mark Webber wins the Japanese Grand Prix ahead of Barrichello in second there Rosberg finishes third ahead of Kovalainen in fourth Button finishes fifth ahead of Glock uh, Kubica and Adrian Suttle gets a rare point for Force India uh, yes we got penalties in the end there uh, luckily PK and Board Day seem to as well but um Bit of a disaster, to say the least. You need to get out there if you want to qualify for the next session. Well, here we are then, on um, what looks like hard tyres. I don't quite know how that's happened. But uh, we are on hard tyres here in Brazil. We've got to hope that we get ourselves through here. I haven't had to change the tyres. At all this season, other than on Australia. Um, yeah, I don't think. I don't think I'll, I'll be able to, to come in and, and change those tyres, so we're just gonna. Oh dear. I'm gonna just have to make the best of it. But, uh, yeah, it was a disaster race, wasn't it, in, in Japan? Which is a real shame, because... We, uh... We seem to do... Whoops. We seem to do so well. I think we could have finished, you know, fourth, maybe fifth, had we had a, a clean race in Japan. I mean, it... I still maintain, maybe the first one was our fault. I don't think the second one was our fault, and certainly not the third one. Um, we've just got a, a random McLaren on the exit of the corner there for some bizarre reason. We're going to get a third lap after this one. But really, it's all... It's all in vain because we're on these hard tyres. I don't think we're going to be able to to really do a lot here unless there's parts of the track that we're particularly quick in. Is in P1. I just don't think it's going to happen. But uh, we'll give it our best shot anyway. Yeah. 
Uh, hit that uh, curb beautifully and now fly down the hill. This is looking good. This is looking very good. good yeah, three seconds off the pace currently. That would put us with a 15.6. Is Got a bit of a slipstream going on here. That might help us. Yeah, that McLaren's still there, annoyingly. But a much better first sector this time. It was a 16.5 we put in in the end. I'm not I'm not sure we're gonna be able to find 1.8 seconds here but it all comes down to being on the wrong tires and I honestly don't know how that happened we've not had to change our tires at all since Australia once I changed it to softs there it's been softs everywhere or options I suppose everywhere else but A decent middle sector just a second off the pace here we're doing really well we're giving it our all here it's gonna be tight I don't think we're gonna quite do it though here we come across the finish line it's a 15-2 wow wow not good so we've got a bit of a streak going at the minute of uh, qualifying down in 20th. It's it's not great. It's not what we want to be doing at, at all. Um, but I think that the hard tyre strategy did work somewhat in Japan. So I'm going to go with that again in this Grand Prix. And we'll see. We'll see what we can pull off here. But... Uh, yeah, gutted about that. Oh, raining. Several peaks and troughs and numerous bumps, which will catch you out if you're not careful. There are a handful of high-speed turns and a lengthy straight, which all add to the complexity of the circuit. Yeah, a bit of a bit of a downer that, isn't it? Um, but there you go. There's your grid. But uh, wet weather. And we are still going to have to pit, but... I have no idea how this is going to go. Lights out. And away we go. For the penultimate race of F1 2009. And it is wet. In Brazil. Oh my word, we nearly went into the back of Sutil there. Uh, had to stamp on the brakes. Luckily, we avoided him. Trying to catch up to PK here, but uh, managed to get past Subtle at least. But he uh, performed well in the last race, of course, um, getting himself a point in Japan. But Toyota did do better than us, and they retook sixth position in the championship. So we do need to be scoring points. Who? Who's out? <laughs> it wasn't Nick Heidfeld, was it? But the, whoever it is, we're at the, the head of this little group here. Is it Lewis Hamilton, maybe? Well, look at this. This is ridiculous, oh my word! I think we're okay, I think it was Lewis Hamilton. Right, right there's yellow flags. Where's the car? Where's the car? I think we're okay. Well, we're up to 12th. We'll, we'll settle for that. 
But I think there's going to be some more craziness to happen in this Brazilian Grand Prix yet. Now we've got Glock just ahead of us. It's gone very, very slowly. Or we're going very, very quickly. I, I, I prefer the the second <laughs> analysis of it. A little bit of curse onto the final straight here. And look how much Timo we gained on him there. And I think Timo Glock is out. That's maybe why he was going so slow. And we're coming into the pits this lap. Well, it was a good lap, that one. Got ourselves up to 11th. Into the pit lane we go, then. Now, where are we going to end up here after these pit stops? Okay, come on. 11.1 seconds. It's not our worst pit stop of the season, it's fair to say. But we're back out in 12th place. I, I don't think that's too bad, you know. It's a pity we haven't got the, the sort of hard, soft um, strategy, but hopefully we'll be all right. Seven laps in this Grand Prix, so still a while to go. Three and a half laps, in fact. Well, here we come past the pit lane. Look at this. There's a load of cars in the pit lane. And we've jumped a lot of them. We're up into 10th place here. That's Kazuki Nakajima just in front for Williams. And we should be faster than him, really. So we could go and grab some points at this uh, race if we can keep this car on the track. Maybe if there's a retirement ahead. Who knows? Well, this is a great chance to overtake Kazuki Nakajima on the penultimate lap of this race. And there we go. We're going for it now. And we are through. And up into eighth place. Final lap, Repeat. Final lap. Final lap is about to come up. Now then, Trulli is ahead of us, so it's not going to really help in our battle with uh, Toyota, which is a real shame. We know Timo Glock is out of this race, so it is just us versus Trulli, but I suppose we have to hope that something happens to him, he runs wide. But uh, coming through this final sector now. I don't think any of that is going to happen. Jarno Trulli is going to finish seventh. Great result for him. Who is going to win the Brazilian Grand Prix? Is Rubens Barrichello going to become world champion at his home Grand Prix? We'll find out. But we finish a great eighth place from 20th in the wet. That was a great performance. But it's Sebastian Vettel who wins here in Brazil. Mark Webber finishes second. Barrichello finishes third. That will be enough to win the World Championship. Rosberg fourth, Massa fifth, then Button 
trolley and we finish it into the driver's standings then uh, Barrichello has won the uh, well, no, he hasn't. Not no. Yes, he has. He has. There's only one race to go. He's 17 points ahead of Mark Webber now. So Barrichello wins for Braun GP. Uh, Sebastian Vettel there in third. Button finishes fourth, and uh, Rosberg is going to finish fifth. We look like we're going to take sixth, but it's going to come down to the last race of the season. Toyota now three points ahead of us in sixth place. We need a good, strong performance in Abu Dhabi if we are to elevate Force India's position. Here we go then for Abu Dhabi, the first ever running of Abu Dhabi. And this was the first look that we actually had of the circuit, I believe. I think the F1 2009 game came out before the Abu Dhabi race, but... Um, It'll be interesting to see whether it goes into the tunnel and all of that. Of course, um, this is the old-style Abu Dhabi circuit with the chicane in there. So much better now with the uh, sweeping hairpin. Probably more famous for the overtake Max Verstappen had on Lewis Hamilton in uh, Abu Dhabi 21 than anything else. But, uh, yeah, uh, I have to say they've uh, nailed it, this circuit. They really have. I think they did a great job with this game. I know, you know, they didn't have the hardware to really make this uh, an incredible um, game like F1 2010, for instance. But, uh, yeah, you know, they did a fabulous, fabulous job. Considering we hadn't had an F1 game since 2006... Um, oh, we've got a puncture, I think. I think Have we got a puncture? I think we've got a puncture. There's a... Our rear right is, is red. Let's have a little look. It does look like... Is quickest through the first two sectors. does look like that tyre is not very well. And we head up to the line then. And that's a 40.9, but that's not going to be good enough. We'll give it a go, but yeah, it looks like we're going to qualify 20th again. Yeah, I don't quite know where we got that puncture. Doesn't seem to be affecting us too much, though. Button is out in front. Actually, quicker than Button in that first sector this time around. It seems okay. Yeah, we can't see that time. I mean with the bad graphics we can't really inspect it maybe it's just a, a glitch in the the telemetry because we had a we had a puncture of course in Malaysia earlier this year and that really did affect us really hear the helicopter in this one I feel like we've not heard that too much in the in the past well let's see how we get on here it felt it has felt like a good lap Let's see as we head up to the line to 39.3. We are through. Fantastic. Hey, Brill. So, Bordet, Sutil, Nagajima, Kubica, and PK all out in Q1. Oh, one lap shootout, you know how good we are at these. Not. Well, let's see how we get on regardless. I mean, we were pretty quick, considering we had a puncture. We go through sector one again, quicker than Jensen Button. Time's up. 
So a button one thirty seven six a thirty nine one from Alonso. I think what did we do? Thirty nine two in Q one. So yeah, we're right on the bubble of whether we're going to get through or not yet. Well, we're actually quicker than button through sectors one and two here. Could we be finishing on a high? But to be fair, it was always Sector 3 where I struggled to get good performance in its old form. So here we come then, round the final corner, round the final bend. Up to the line we go. And it's a 36.9. That is fastest of all. Very good. Very, very good. Both McLarens out in uh, Q2 then, along with Alonso, Buemi and Heidfeld. Well, into Q3 then. And we should get two runs at this, as long as we don't make a huge mistake on this lap. So, decent chance of another pole position this season. Yes, yeah, very good first sector. Bottom is in P1. Yeah, this is pretty good. Through the chicane we go. And now heading up. Through the middle sector split. Still a tenth of a second up. On Mr. Button. Here we go then, we're going to fly around these final couple of corners. What can we do? Is it going to be pole position? I think it is. Wow, a 36.2. We will settle for that. That is an awesome lap time. Um, that is a second and a half quicker than Jensen Button. You can guarantee we won't be that quick in the race, but we'll settle for it. That's another pole position for us. Uh, Jensen Button there. Uh, in second, Weber third, then Vettel, uh, Rosberg, Trulli, Massa and Barrichello rounds out the top eight. Let's see how we get on for one final time in F1 2009. The Yas Marina Circuit, Abu Dhabi. This track has been built on a man-made island and as such is relatively flat. There are numerous right angle bends linking several large straights. There is one tight hairpin that leads to the longest straight. It's crucial you get your line right through this turn. Here we go then for one final time in F1 2009. We're ready for the lights. Lights out. And away we go here in Abu Dhabi. And there you go. Straight away a poor start for us as we head into turn one. But lots of cars are heading wide there, including Jensen Button. And he slows us right down there. And we got the two Red Bulls leading the way. Now, are we going to be able to get past these guys in a straight line? Nico Rosberg is the car behind us. He's going to finish fifth in the championship this year very good result for him he did win a race i think was it back in china maybe but he won a race this season was looking like a championship contender there's jensen button and we managed to make our way past him 
And they're breaking in a straight line just behind Mark Webber. This is tricky. Uh, car's feeling very, very skittish. There we go. Oh dear. Well, we cut the final corner. Very lucky not to get an old. Uh, drive through penalty there went to turn one cars going a little bit wide Weber being held up by Sebastian Vettel. Vettel won't like to hear that. Yeah, we were going to go for it there. I think we're going to have him down the inside, potentially. No. Nope. Vettel's gone a, a little wide here. Mm, we've not had the best exit from that one. But we are pulling away from Jensen Button, which is good to see. Not really got any chance into this slow, twisty section. Yep, nearly went into the back of Mark Webber there. Oh yeah, we're going into the pits, aren't we? Goodness me. Whoa! Well, we're about right in the way there. Now, let's see how this works. I don't know. Do we go under the track? We'll put on a fresh set of tyres, refuel, and have you back on the track in no time. Come on. Yeah, we're behind button. Oh my God, what's happening? Getting practicing for F1 2010 with that hold up there. Goodness me. Right, making our way back past all of those guys. And yes, it, it is the, uh, the the tunnel version of the pit lane, which I'm, I'm surprised they, they modelled so well. Goodness me, and a gravel trap on the exit there as well. Oh, crikey. A drive-through penalty for running wide. A drive-through penalty for running wide. This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. It's become a feature of the second half of this season, hasn't it? Getting drive-through penalties, but... Uh, what can you do? I'm thinking maybe... Yeah, maybe this lap actually. Because then we can hold up some people coming out of the pit lane. I was going to leave it a lap, but... Yeah, I'll be I'll be happy once the uh, the silly penalty system is, in for his stop. is gone. Well, here we go then into the the pit lane for another drive-through penalty in today's episode. We had about four of them in Japan. Now, where are we going to come out here? Oh, this is devastating. This is devastating. Remember, we started on pole position in this race. That's 
pretty good. Now then, can we get back into the points? Because uh, we need to outscore Trulli by three points here to, to get ourselves up in the sixth in the Constructors. Let's see. go a little bit wide it it looked good but uh, that's probably cost us three or four seconds there Well, we pass uh, Robert Kubica there. But Nick Heidfeld next. Can we get back into the points? It's going to be very, very tricky. Oh, we got a few cars running wide there. Gives us a, an opportunity here into the chicane. Well, that was uh, a nasty little crash. <laughs> and uh, ends our season on a, on a low note. It has to be said. We definitely should have scored points in this race. Maybe even got onto the podium. PK again. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, still. As fast as we can. Looks like Vettel has won the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix and it's a real shame but we're going to come round in 15th place it's a disappointing end to the season for us and here we come round the final corner not great and worse still I think Kovalainen is going to take us uh, take our sixth place in the championship but uh, we will see Vettel uh, wins the final race of the season in Abu Dhabi Weber finishes second then Button in third Barrichello fourth Rosberg in fifth Kovalainen in sixth then Nagajima and Trulli Buemi finishes ninth ahead of Alonso in P10 Glock finishes 11th Baudet 12th Heidfeld 13th with Kubica in 14th place, Piquet finishes 16th ahead of Raikkonen, Hamilton, Suttil and Felipe Massa. Heike Kovalainen does in fact overtake us for 6th place in the championship. We finish 7th in our rookie season ahead of uh, Felipe Massa in 8th, the trolley 9th and the world champion Lewis Hamilton in 10th. Barrichello is our championship winner, 14 points ahead of Mark Webber, who finishes second. Vettel there in third, Button finishes in fourth. Uh, Rosberg, an excellent fifth for Williams, scored a hell of a lot of points for that Williams team. And into the constructors, Williams finished third. That is the um, the big news, but Red Bull have overtaken Braun GP and they are Constructors champions for the very first time. Three points ahead of Braun in the end. McLaren finished fourth ahead of Ferrari in fifth. Toyota secure sixth ahead of us in seventh. BMW finished eighth. Very disappointing for them, but not as disappointing as Renault in ninth. And Toro Rosso bring up the rear. Okay. 
that is the end of season one let's have a little look and see if we get any um contract offers for season two let's have a little look here uh okay cool let's end the season there and see what it says um we still seem to be with force india have we got any other contract offers only toro rosso um well i think that would be a bit of a backward step to be honest with you uh or is that the only contract offer we're gonna get i'm not sure i'm not sure um, season results, we can't actually look back at last season, that's really annoying. Um, I do kind of want to press, if I press start season, what will happen? Okay, offer declined, fair enough. Yep, it looks like we are back then with Force India for season 2 in F1 2010, which is probably what I would have done anyway. Um, yeah, a very, very interesting. Now, I don't know, does it say that it's the 2010 season on this? Uh, yes, it does. There you go. There you go. So Rubens Barrichello is the defending champion and uh, it is 2010. And heading into the new world championship, it will be on the new game, of course, in F1. 2010 has anybody else uh, moved teams i've never actually done a second season in this game before so yeah just look like everything has stayed the same there okay fair enough anyway that is the end of f1 2009 we've had some incredible highs this season including podiums um but uh, we didn't get that elusive race win we did get plenty of pole positions though showing that we do have pace in qualifying and i'm sure that we will continue that form into f1 2010 but that is where we are going to be leaving it for f1 2009 the first season of the ultimate career mode is done and it will be force india that we are joining once again in f1 2010 will we ever get up to those championship fighting teams or will force india develop into a championship fighting team over the next few seasons we will have to find out but if you have enjoyed it give it a big thumbs up down below subscribe for plenty more f1 ultimate career mode content and i hope you guys are having a wonderful day thanks for watching and goodbye